What's up? It's Signal. Today, I want to talk about the Dynamics device because it's one of Bitwig's most powerful, most versatile, and also it's a little bit confusing. You see, the information in the Bitwig manual concerning the Dynamics device is pretty shallow. I'm pretty sure it just says it is an upwards-downwards compressor, but it is also an expander. And when you go over here to show help, you'll see flexible compressor expander with side chain. That's how we describe it. So you look at this, you look at the manual, and you say, okay, where is the compression and where is the expansion? If you're like me, you haven't even encountered upper compression until this device. I mean, why would I compress upwards? And the first time I made this video, I was slightly off and I was politely corrected by a twitchy bones. So I'm going to be putting his music in the description instead of mine for this video. So go follow Twitchy Bones on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, wherever you like to listen to music. It's nice ambient electronica. Shout out to them for making this video a better resource. So what seems to be the case is this module here or here seems to be both a compressor and expander. I perceive this as expansion and this as compression. But I think Twitchy Bones put it best that if you learn to perceive this high threshold here, this will just be the same thing, but mirrored or reversed. So no matter what, when we move to the right with the ratio knob, we have compression. And then when we move to the left, we have expansion. I can prove this by creating a drum gate. So real quick, there's just some EQing and some distortion on this Amen break. Sounds like this. I'm going to turn on the device. I'm going to create downwards expansion. Let in the attack. Play with the release. And lower this threshold. So because that's operating as a gate, we know that is downwards expansion. If we run the test in the other direction, move the ratio knob up like that. I'm not really capable of telling if that's upwards compression or expansion, but when we move this one up, I think it's fair to say with the way it hits the ceiling here, that is obviously expansion. It becomes more obvious when you turn them all the way up. Most of us just aren't inclined to do that because it hurts. I mean, you see, I turned this down to negative 20 dB. Let's get into some practical mixing applications. Here we have two brakes just lined up. It's a hot pants brake. and the Amen break. So let's dial this in real quick. Let's dial in the dynamic on the break. I'm gonna zero this all out. I hate how that doesn't zero zero. So I'm going to make a date. Now I can bring texture out by either expanding upwards or compressing downwards. I'm going to compress downwards. And 
this case, I'm actually going to turn it down negative one dB. And we're going to move on to the polysynth. I actually just got this MIDI clip from Bitwig. It's like over here, uh, over here in clips. And then I added this voice leading to make it more pad like because I think this is supposed to be a keyboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compress upwards and then I'm going to expand on that compression. Because you can see that little bit of tape noise here, this is that's coming from here, Magnite. It's a tape machine from Black Black Rooster. You can see this notch filter going into this chorus. It's kind of floating around. So we have like a lot of saturated movement. So we're kind of going to use that upwards compression to bring up the notch filter and the tape machine and any other little movements that might be existing inside of the sound. Let's bring the task down raise the release and you can also see I have it on RMS because I just kind of like the way it feels for pads it works really well and then I kind of like it to look like that we're really not doing a lot again it's a lot yeah And now let's expand. All right, let's zero the threshold out, then expand. I hate that. out. I'm going to raise this an octave. Now listen to it without. With. You can see how we start to develop a sense of depth within the sound over time. And that's what I really like to use this for is not like really precise carvings unless I'm side chaining. I like to use it for gentle textures. But that said, we can side chain. So I have a side chain set up here. Here's a kick drum. Does anyone remember Deadbeat Sounds? This is one of their samples.
first I expanded upwards until it was kind of at this volume that I wanted. And then I added some downwards expansion. And first let me play it without. Kind of hear that tail sloppy. again and a lot of the work that I'm doing here is like uh, this saturator and this device is considering the fact that I have stretched this out here so I have to add some information in to kind of get it to poke out a little bit because there's not enough information here to communicate over like the course of time that I played out. So one more time. Here we have some upwards compression and some upwards expansion. And then here we have upwards expansion and then downwards expansion. Let's do one without all of the dynamic processing. And that's pretty much it. Just throw it on a couple elements and chase your ear. You have it figured out really quickly. If you've learned anything, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know if there's anything you'd like me to cover.